This is Ali coming at you live from Live Studios, and we're here with our fifth episode of Hit Me Out. All right, so just hit me out. We got a few topics for you all here today, as usual. Um, today's episode is a continuation from the last episode, protesting the pandemic. So we're gonna kind of keep it going. Um, last episode was talking more about the problems. This episode is all about solutions. All right, so what we did is we went out, we put our boots on the ground, we hit the streets, and we talked to a lot of people. We talked to some educators, we talked to some social workers, we talked to some people in criminal justice, and we talked to some people in finance departments, all right? And we came up with a lot of different solutions for important sectors of the world that we could use right now to figure out how we can get things changed. So the first topic we got, um, social unrest in, in this pandemic. It's all, all kind of stuff going on in 2020. But, you know, since we last, you know, got together and talked about, you know, what was going on, it's been a lot of talk about defunding the police. All right. But let me tell you what they've also been talking about defunding schools. So what happens when you defund the police? And what happens when you start taking money away from schools? I'll let you use your imagination on that one. All right. But what I will say is that in my city, a lot of schools were closed down. The high school isn't even there anymore. It, it got torn down. It's charter schools in. But the public school system is pretty much dead in Highland Park. Um, and it's been like that in a lot of other cities as well. Detroit closed down a lot of schools. You know, a lot of other inner cities closed down a lot of schools. So the proposal that we came is to open up those closed schools. Why were they closed in the first place? You know, as a teacher, and a lot of administrators might, you know, argue you down on this one. But being in the classroom on a day-to-day -day basis, the bigger the class the easier it is to get distracted. The smaller the class, the easier it is for the students to focus. It seems like an easy concept, but some classes have, you know, up to the max. What I suggest, what we request, is to open up some of these closed schools, get more teachers a job. All right, so since we're going to defund these schools and police, I hope that we're going to reinvest it into, you know, the actual people and Generation Next, the children. You know, it, it just makes a lot of sense that way for me. And while we're at it, you know, giving these children something to work for, how about we give them something to look at? You know, a lot of monuments were torn down because, you know, uh, citizens felt that it was no reason for any slave generals or any generals who had slaves to be represented in this country. You know, but what I also feel should happen in reverse, or I guess on the flip side, is to put up more monuments. Another thing I really want to talk about is something that we never ran from. Colin's sacrifice. Colin Kaepernick. Um, four years later, he was right. He was right. What, why was he right? What did he do? Well, he didn't take a knee for the flag. He didn't take a knee for the national anthem. We know that much. What he took a knee for was that he felt too many black people were dying at the hands of police and they were unarmed. Hmm. Fast forward four years later, what's going on? Oh, it's a lot of protests because too many black men are dying unarmed to the police. So when stuff like that happens, it really makes you wonder what else could be an issue? What else is wrong with the world that we missing if we just miss something as blatant as that? Because mind you, this, this issue didn't start four years ago with Kaepernick. It didn't start May 25th when George Floyd died. This started over 400 years ago. All right, because like we said in the last issue, we wrote a clip. Let's look at the history of police. Well, police and black people, I should say. Again, I'm only speaking from the black perspective because, you know, I'm a black man here in America. So let's look at the history of police in America towards black people. They started as slave catchers, all right? So they were catching people who they call runaway slaves. Running away from what? Something that you were brought to against your will? So that was the initial law that they said black people here in America were breaking. So if that's the stain, that's the initial stain, the first scar, we got to heal that scar before we just put a Band-Aid over it. Because this is what happens. We get a cut. So it didn't just start with George Floyd. It didn't just start four years ago when Colin took his knee. This is a 400 plus year old problem. All right. And it really makes you think, what other problems do we have that's equally as old or close to it? And then I got to digging. And you know what I found? I found something very disturbing. Something that I actually already knew about, but it was so in the back of my mind that I no longer thought about it. I thought just because, and I'm going to give you a little hint, I thought just because Native Americans uh, had the, the casino money, I thought everything was fine. I'm like, oh, they're getting money from the casinos. They're fine. No. So what I'm saying is that it's a lot of history that happened in this country that we're not dealing with. 
Oh, I did. I, I missed that part of history. Could you could you remind me? Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, uh, European settlers got off the boat. It was some people here, some very friendly people, Native Americans. Um, they pretty much robbed them, uh, gave them disease, abused their women, children, the men. And then they sent them west. Go here to Oklahoma. We got some reservations for you. All right. But when we talk to those social workers, what we found out is a lot of those reservations uh, look worse than third world countries. A lot of them. All right. And that's how we're doing the founders of the land that I'm standing in right now. So let's think about two big sins, two huge sins that happened in this country before civilization even started, pretty much. American, civiliz American civilization. And then from that, they took that stolen land and they brought some stolen people from Africa, put them here, build a country. Once the country's done, get out of here. Uh, hopefully you, you all might be able to get some rights. I don't know, but just get off the land and go do whatever you're going to do. All right. That's, that's what happened. So what I suggest is that whatever businesses got started in those days, they need to get back. Get back to Native Americans, get back to the black communities. Well, we already gave a lot of money to the black community with, uh, you know, the social unrest. I haven't seen anything. So what you can do if you want to get back to the black community, put Fred Hampton's Recreation Center right there on Wood and Ferris, where the high school used to be. We need to see results. We need to see progress. We need to see monuments. We need to see colleges named after our heroes. And then we got a bunch of other demands that we're going to talk to you That's about. That's all I got for now. We're going to go ahead and start the next segment. It's going to be a lot different than previous episodes because part two, we're going to switch it up for you for, you know, E5. All right. So stay tuned. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Peace. Fight for equality, fight for justice for us all, 
So it won't be you standing up here asking people to stand with you. One thing about me, if you don't know me, I'm a real one. And I deal with everything they throw at me, head up, chest out. I don't run from it. I face it. I take responsibility for my acts because I'm a black man and I'm proud. To all my Jewish people here, from my mouth to your ears, I love you. One thing about it, and this is what y'all don't know, as a black man with no college degree, I got the world following me. 18 countries, 50 states. They're threatened by that. Because we stand for love. Because love is pushing hate out. So don't let you, don't let them tell you nothing different. Don't let them, don't let them try to control the narrative and tell y'all something different. They're trying to take attention off the moment we have right now because they see us standing together, they see us making noise, and they see love is pushing out hate. From my mouth to your ears, I love you all. And we love you too. We love you back. Nice, thank you. But we at the point now, y'all, where they listening, now it's time to make some actual things change. We gonna keep marching, we gonna keep making demands, but now it's time for them to start making change. We need policy change where we all equal. We need laws change where we all treated equal. You cannot expect me as a basketball player, the way I show love to everybody, perfect example, after a hard play game, and I see a little white kid on the side and I decide to go give him love. I can't continue to give that love and not receive that same love back. And that's not asking for nothing. That's how we should live, it's common sense. Common sense is not common no more, world. Just treat people how you want to be treated. And one thing about it, well I can stand up here proud and say I love all y'all and I'm standing for all y'all because they cannot attack my resume in no way, shape, or form. You Google Steven Jackson, you might see a heart. Okay. <laughs> you might not see nothing about basketball because today what I'm standing for, I want to be known for changing lives and changing this world. Fuck basketball. I'm telling y'all here today, I've had a lot, lot of success in other things, but from the bottom of my soul, I'm willing to die for change. I'm putting my life behind this for every race, for every soul out here. Going to Minnesota, when my brother was first murdered, what they didn't know was he had a, he had a brother in the NBA that had one of the biggest podcasts in the world that was going to use his voice in the right way. They didn't know that. They didn't expect that. They thought it was going to be another murder that swept under the rug. But it's a new day. It's a new day. And while I was there, speaking up for my brother, I met at least 10 moms with no Stephen Jackson to speak up for their kids that was murdered by police. And all I could see, all I could get from them was their pain and their tears. I'm not Superman, but I feel it's my duty to be their voice. I feel it's my duty to, to, to be the voice for the ones that don't have a Stephen Jackson to speak up for them.